as we come to the end of our fast, for those of you that have been participating in our church-wide fast, and as we get ready to incorporate some of the things back in our diet and start to fill our calendars and our schedules back to what we would consider somewhat of a normal routine, I wanna encourage us with this word that I have today. And it's simply to lean in. It's my prayer that we would continue to lean in in this season to hear and to see what it is that God has in store for us and that we would not take our foot off the pedal, but we would continue to drive towards what it is that God has in store for us. And so I wanna encourage you right now to go in your Bibles to Psalms chapter 133. The team is gonna throw it at the bottom of the screen. And I just want to encourage you to read it along with me because I believe it's something so powerful about us reading scripture corporately. I know you may be in your home by yourself or you may be with your family or you may be watching me from the confinements of your car, but it is something so powerful when we take an opportunity to declare the word of God together. And so although you may not be able to hear your brothers and sisters, I wanna encourage you with this thought. Your brothers and sisters in one accord will be reading this scripture along with you. And so Psalm chapter 133, it says, how wonderful and pleasant It is when brothers and sisters live together in harmony, for harmony is as precious as the anointing oil that was poured over Aaron's head that ran down his beard and onto the border of his robe. Harmony is as refreshing as the dew from Mount Hermon that falls on the mountains of Zion. And there the Lord has pronounced his blessing. I wanna repeat that again. There the Lord has pronounced his blessing. Where has the Lord pronounced his blessing? Where there is harmony. Where there's harmony, the Lord pronounces his blessing. As I read that scripture, I'm reminded of music and how music plays such a pivotal role in our lives. And we tend to wake up with the song on our mind and you watch a good movie, one of the most memorable portions of any, of any movie is the music that goes along with it. And one of the most calming and relaxing types of music for me is symphony music. And here in Jacksonville, I don't know how it is where you are, but here in Jacksonville, we have the Jacksonville Symphony. And the thing that I love about the symphony is All of the musicians, they play different instruments. Some are wind and some are wood, some are brass, but no matter what it is that they are playing, the thing that makes it unique to the symphony is they're not all playing the same thing. And that's what the word of God is talking about when it speaks of harmony. Each and every one of us, we we play a portion, we play a part, we are, are unified together. And when we are in unity, it doesn't mean that all of us are doing the same thing. It means that all of us are on one accord in, in harmony with what it is that God desires for us. And so you may play a different part than me and I may play a different part than you, but we are all a part of the symphony of God. And when we bring our differences together, and we utilize them for the betterment of the body of Christ and for the advancement of the kingdom of God, that's when we see the blessing of God pronounced over and on our lives like never before. If this season has done anything for us, it has shown us that the enemy desires that we would be divided, that we would be divided by our politics, that we would be divided by our race, that we would be divided by our income, but it's God's desire to utilize our differences to bring harmony to his kingdom and to the body of Christ. And I love the last part of that scripture. It says that when we are in harmony and in one accord, that's where the Lord pronounces his blessing. I'm reminded of a passage of scripture in Isaiah chapter 43. If you got your Bible, I want you to go there. I'm going to begin at verse 15. And it says, I am the Lord, your holy one, Israel's creator and king. I am the Lord who opened a way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea. Verse 17 says, I call forth thy mighty army out of Egypt with all of its chariots and horses. 
I drew them beneath the waves and they drowned. Their lives snuffed out like smoldering candle wicks. But forget all of that. I love this part. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do. And I just want you to think about that for a moment. It is nothing compared to what God is about to do. And so just like the symphony, they could be warming up and they could be playing different things and all these different types of noises. And then the conductor hits his conducting stick on the stand and they all lean in. No matter what our differences is, no matter what season of life we may be in, No matter what the scenario or the circumstance is, I believe God is hitting his conductor stick on the stand and he desires for us in this season to lean in. And so I just want to go back to Isaiah, that that, 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 that 19th uh, scripture, that 19th verse for a moment, it says, for I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness and I will create rivers in a dry place. What he is talking about is doing something when we lean in that we have not seen. And I believe this is our season to see things that we've never seen before, to hear God speak like we've never heard before, and to see God move on our behalf like we've never seen God move before. But this is only possible when we lean in. When you think about a symphony and you've you've been to an opera, you've been to a symphony show, you know, when the conductor hits the stand, They all sit up on the edge of their seats and they all lean in. And the reason we can lean in, if you're writing notes, I want you to write this down. Point number one, in Isaiah, God makes three declarations to us. And the first declaration that God makes is I've got this. And I want you to hear me when I tell you that God has got this. It's so important for us to remember that this is not taking God by surprise, what we are seeing, what we are going through, what we are dealing with. And God has declared over us, I've got this. Your destiny is God's history. And so it's important that we lean into his voice to see what he has already done so that we can carry it out and walk it out and live it out in the life that God has allowed us to live. And so I just want you to put that in the chats. God has got this. He's saying, I've got this. I love the passage of scripture that God tells us. He says, if I be for you, who or what can be against you? In verse 15, it says, I am the Lord, your holy one, the creator of Israel, your king. Before he made his promise, God declared his ultimate name. I am. I love that word. I am. Am, because it declares who God is to us and it declares he is what we need him to be and so much more. I don't know what it is that you need God to be, but I'm a firm believer that no matter what it is you have a need of, he is. And so for a moment, I just want you to put in the chat that God is whatever it is that you need him to be. If you are sick in your body, he is a healer. If you're going through a crisis, he is a deliverer. If you're going through a financial problem, he is a provider. Whatever you need God to be, that's what he is and he wants you to know I've got this he's got this he knew what 2021 would look like he's got this He knew what you would be dealing with in this month. He's got this. He knew what the obstacles would be. He he knew what enemies would be present. He knew what hurdles you would have to overcome. And he's still declaring to you, I've got this. And so I want you to have peace and rest assured that no matter what it is that you may be faced with, you can be on your mountaintop or you can be in your valley. No matter what season you are in, God wants you to know I've got this. And the blessing and the benefit of serving a God, the the way that we serve, the serving a king that has risen and sits on the throne is if you're having a great season, it gets better. And if you're having a bad season, it gets better. No matter what season you're in, the benefit of serving Jesus Christ is he declares, he promises, he decrees a life with me is far better when you live it out in the will that I've laid before you. He's got 
point number two is this. This is the declaration that God makes. This is what he decrees. This is what he announces. He announces to us, I've done it before. In verse chapter 16, it says, Thus saith the Lord, who makes a, a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters. He, he's telling us, listen, this is not new to me. I, I'm not taken by surprise. This, this is a season for you to lean in and experience my goodness and experience my grace and experience my mercy. This is not new to me. I've got this. I've done this before. And the reality is I'm going to see you through this season. I love what it says in verse chapter 16. It says, thus saith the Lord who makes a way. God is making a way for you right now. He's making a way for you right now. The, the reality is we can't make a way in our own power or in our own ability. We need a savior to help us navigate and to dictate and to predict and to walk out what it is that we may be faced with because in our own power, we don't have the ability to do it. But we serve a God that does. The scripture continues to read. It says, God reminds us that he makes a way, a path through the impassable. And where there is a dry place, he provides a river. And whether there is a mountain, he provides a valley. And where there's a valley, he provides a, a mountain. And no matter what is in your way, God desires for you to know that he has your back because he's done it before. And the reality is, if God has done it before, he will do it again. I just want that to sink into your spirit for a moment because I, I need you to know this. I, I need you to walk away from this moment in time, understanding and being confident that he that has begun a good work in you shall complete it until the day of his return. I, I love the idea that God gives us the declaration. He says in verse 15, I've got this in verse 16. I've done it before. And I'm telling you that God desires to put a stake in the ground in every situation every circumstance that you may be going through and remind you of how faithful he has been in things in your past. And when you remind yourself and you bring yourself to the place where you got out of the test, it brings you to a testimony and it reminds you if he did it then, he'll do it now and he'll do it for my next. I don't know what it is that you have need of, but we serve a God that does. And he wants you to confidently know, I've got this, I've done it before, and point number three is this. I'm coming to do it again. The process may be painful, but the results will be beautiful. And I know in this season, you, you may be going through some things. You may be battling some some giants, you may be scaling some mountains, but God wants you to know I've got this, I, I've done it before, and I'm coming to do it again. I wanna encourage you with this thought, don't close the book where God is asking you to just turn the page. I know there's a lot of unknown and a lot of uncertainty and in certain seasons, a lot of confusion. And we may not have the answers, but we serve a savior that does. And we cannot forget that we have a secret weapon that has never lost a battle. We, we have a secret weapon that that promises over and over and over and over again, victory. And what he asks from us is that we would continue to believe in him, and that we would continue to surrender to him so that we could see the hand of God move on our behalf like never before. reminded as we close of the Australian coat of arms, the shield, 
their badge of honor on it. It has an emu and a kangaroo. And after I was looking and doing some research on the emu, it, it blew me away some of the interesting facts that the emu can't do certain things. And if you're like me, you've never heard of an emu before, but I encourage you to, to do a little research after this and, and see how unique this animal is because one of the interesting facts about an emu is it can't go backwards. No matter how hard it tries, no matter what its face would, it cannot retreat. And my prayer for us is that we would lean in in this season and just like the emu not go backwards and have our mind made up that we can't go back to the things that we used to do and we can't go back to what we used to be and we can't retreat to who it is that we now we're never called to be but we would always lean in and lean forward and charge ahead because we have certain victory so we we take this moment we take this season, we take this time in every battle, every giant, every obstacle, every hurdle, and we don't retreat. We lean into it because the God of all sufficiency has said, my grace is sufficient for you. We're gonna go into a time of worship right here as Ryan and Marie lead us for a moment. I want you to get your elements ready to take communion with us. And at the conclusion of this song, we're gonna be led in communion. And as we're worshiping, I want you to lean in. I want you to seek out the voice of God because I believe no matter where you are, whether you are at your office cubicle in your job or you're in your living room at home or in the front seat of your car the presence of God can meet you right where you are 